Stanley Myers says the answer to dependence on foreign oil lies all around us in seawater, tap water, and rainwater. Any kind of H2O, he says, can power just about every type of engine. How? With the water fuel cell. It fits in the palm of his hand, but it could revolutionize the world. You're talking about a pollution-free, totally new source of energy, the voltage disassociation of water. The fuel cell converts water into a gas, hydrogen oxygen, which is released in the form of thermo-explosive energy. So the water fuel injector simply replaces the spark plug. We hook it to a hydrogen computer system, which regulates and meters the flow going into the injector. It processes the water in such a way to release its thermal explosive energy and does it on demand. For the past 10 years, Stanley's kept the water fuel cell a secret. Not create any form of energy. The only thing we're doing is utilizing the energy that's already stored in hydrogen and uh, in water in the form of hydrogen. All we've done is been able to, we know in the law of physics there are four forces that affect uh, the atoms, uh, the electrical force, electromagnetic force, weak and strong nuclear force. So what we have done is been able to attenuate the electrical fields to overcome the electrical attraction force and therefore pull apart the water molecule in a physical manner. And as a result of this, you can attenuate the voltage field and now to bring on uh, the attenuation or control the production of the gas. That was the second major requirement of NASA in order to use hydrogen as a fuel source. Next. Any others? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty hearing you. Okay, we have developed what's called a steam resonator that since the unlike atoms take on opposite electrical charges, then we have learned that by simply switching an alternate, uh, the voltage uh, zones, someone's calling. Uh, we have learned that by uh, attenuating the electrical fields, to cause the water molecules to now uh, agitate back and forth and it will superheat the water uh, by using electrical fields. Yes? Uh, well, basically, the, uh, the oil in the engine remains the same, but if we have uh, additional problems, then we worked out the technology many years ago that if you would impregnate the cylinder walls with Teflon and even impregnate the uh, bearings, you can actually run the engine without any oil whatsoever. So that type, uh, type of technology is already in existence. Anybody know about Slick, Slick 50? Okay. Next question? Yes. Does your have a battery present on board to the power? Yes. All we do is connect it to the conventional electrical system that's already on the dune buggy. You see, when you switch off the flow of amps and you go to the voltage attenuation, voltage is a tremendous electrical attraction force with an electronic circuit. So we're using the water as a component part of the electronic circuit. And as a result of that, we now shut off the flow of amps and allow the opposite electrical voltage fields to perform the work to split the water molecule. So it's not a requirement that we use a tremendous amount of energy and input to release it. Now, um, as we mentioned before, the fuel cell is, does not create the energy. The only thing it's doing is releasing that energy. Now what we're doing is taking the release uh, atoms, uh, the hydrogen, oxygen, and ambient air gases that's coming from the water and we're now processing it to an even a more uh, advanced state by taking it into a subcritical state. And as a result of that, we now can release a tremendous amount of energy uh, under the equation Einstein's equation of energy equals mass times the square light, that whenever you decrease the mass of a combustible atom, you can release a tremendous amount of energy. That is the basic principle of a thermonuclear device. But we've done this on a control state by which we now can release that energy and do it safely. Next. This gentleman way back here glasses. Yeah, why can't I buy one for my car? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I had a warehouse full of them, I'd probably sell 40 million today and 80 million tomorrow. Hopefully, it will become within less than a year that this will take place. Yes? I just have to say this. You do realize that the power is damaged. can't possibly allow you to survive. <laughs> well, uh, as you have uh, given my testimony, many people ask me why I'm still alive. And I am writing a book on this called uh, With the Lord There's Purpose. And I've learned about the power of angels, and the angels have protected me. I've gone to all, uh, many of the countries of the world. I've been negotiating with many of the leaders of the, of the, of the world in order to bring the technology, uh, even in their countries, even in Japan. And unfortunately, there are those who seek not to allow this type of technology if it comes out. So the reason why I'm here today is to relate that this technology is here. And, uh, but in the final analysis, we can do the work, develop it, 
and showing that we have a viable answer to the energy problem that I can just pull out of my pocket called a water fuel cell injector. But the basic and the real problem is going to come down to you and I. And it's going to be determined by you whether or not you want your economies to stabilize. We are living in a very false security and uh, whether you know it or not, as I mentioned earlier, that the supply of oil throughout the entire world is diminishing at a fantastic alarming rate. China has opened the doors to Western technology. 25% of the population of the world wants the same goods and services that you and I have been enjoying for well over 200 years. The hourglass effect on the nuclear power plants is now causing France tremendous problems of not being able to supply energy. Uh, England had almost two near nuclear accidents within the last two years that if they would have occurred, they'd had to evacuate all of England. Helsinki had another nuclear uh, mishap uh, very shortly. The Chernobyl affair, we talked about that the meltdown is still occurring in the fields, and what they don't tell you is that the contamination that went in the atmosphere and went over the northern part of Sweden and Norway, and they had to kill off a lot of their reindeer and animals, but they don't tell you that the nuclear meltdown is still occurring and is contaminating the water tables. And all that water table is now going into the Mediterranean and going into the Black Sea. And the millions and millions of people that now will use that water to wash their clothes and process their food will die of cancer or being exposed to high radiation. So uh, just as uh, Job 38, verse 22 and 23 said, the technology will come out of a time of great trouble. Now, let's take one example. Sudan has access to the viral germ through genetic restructuring that it breeds on bacteria, air, and it can even breed on oil. One thimbleful size could contaminate all the oil in the Mideast. If all the countries would then, therefore, have to stop the flow of oil to all of their countries, the entire industrial base of the world is based on the supply and the utilization of energy. If that would occur, I will tell you, within 180 to 240 days thereafter, 1.5 billion people will be facing starvation. You know, during the Arab embargo, when it hit us, I started asking questions to like Cardinal Food Industries and others. Gentlemen, how long do we have before the food supply chain in the United States will be disrupted? They said, stand within 27 days. The world supply is less than that. And therefore, we will be faced with a tremendous catastrophic event if an alternative energy source cannot get into the economies of the world. So I've been based and working on the technology on the Department of Authority Word of God since that premise in order to bring this type of technology forward. So whether it's water fuel cell or any other form of technology, give these men a hand to come up and say, gentlemen, I have a way that perhaps we can solve the energy problem, inherently also solve the environmental pollution problem. If you think we got a problem today, we're at 5.2 billion people on the face of this earth. In less than 15 years, that'll go to 9 billion. You know, in the inter-period of time, an internal combustion engine, we have dropped the ox oxygen content in the air tremendously. And as a result of that, within a period of 15 years, at nine, 9 billion people who may have to go out on respirators. And if you listen to the other gentleman that was here yesterday, uh, he spoke about if you keep on putting the CO2 into the air, the carbon dioxide, what happened? The energy level of the earth, uh, the atmosphere is going to drop to such an extent, not even our plants are going to be able to live. So the problem is not Stan Myers trying to develop an alternate energy source. The problem is that we're all in the same boat. And if we don't come together in one accord, it'll never occur. So we're showing the problem that, hey, we have a viable answer. Once I bring this technology out into in the, in, the marketplace or bring it out to the nations of the world as we are doing so, it's going to be you that's going to determine whether we're going to survive or not, not Stan Myers. So I've been working on this premise since 1975. Thank you. The man who invented an engine that can run on water says he's been offered a billion dollars in cash by oil producing countries to sell his patent. So far, he hasn't sold. Environmental specialist Jan Porter talked to the inventor who thinks that the U.S. auto industry could produce cars that run on water now if they wanted to. Our industrial base of the world is based on the utilization of Stan Meyer has a car that runs on water and that's drawing crowds okay. at this year's extraordinary science conference in Colorado Springs. 
Myers has developed what is called the water fuel cell injector. The injector breaks down the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, and the hydrogen is what powers the car. Basically all we do is replace uh, the spark plug and replace it with the water fuel cell injector as you see right here. We simply feed ordinary non-processed water or processed water in here, and as the water goes into the injector, uh, it hits a very high false voltage frequency, which instantly converts it into thermal explosive energy. And as a result, we can run this car down a road on water. Meyer's invention was introduced in Britain earlier this month, and now the Brits have followed him here. That we recently took a scientific delegation to witness Stan's work, to really evaluate it, and came back saying, this is one of the most important inventions of the century. In a matter of six months to a year, it may be obsolete to call this a gas pedal. Meyer is now working on making the mechanics smaller than in his dune buggy lab, and he expects the cost to retrofit a car to water power to be about $1,500. On the Earthwatch, I'm Jan Porter. 11